what I learned, what I learned from other activists was that it's actually it is it is their uh, terrible uh, history uh, of lawsuits. <laughs> To Louis, Joseph, and James. I hope you liked that. I think it was very interesting. So I'd like to welcome our filmmakers uh, and some people you will recognize from the film up to the stage. Come on up. Um, and also I'd like to welcome Tracy McWhorter, we're very lucky to have her. Come on up, guys, no just to be shy. Yeah, yeah. So Tracy will introduce everybody. Wait, do we have one more chair? One more chair. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, well. We're very lucky to have with us as our moderator tonight, Tracy McQuarter. Uh, Tracy was named a national food hero for changing the way American, America eats for the better by Vegetarian Times. She's the author of the upcoming book, Ageless Vegan, as well as the national bestseller by Any Greens Necessary. She has an... M Thank you very much, Susan. Thank you. Thank you. Can everybody hear me fine? Yeah. If I can. Great. Um, um, the structure will be that I will ask everyone one question and ask that the time U.S. national cycling champion, a two-time Pan American gold medalist, and an Olympic silver medalist. Who is a professional boxer and world, heavy, world heavyweight title contender with a professional record of 21 wins and losses. 22 now. 22. 22. And my friend from DC, Dr. James Loomis. Dr. Loomis is the medical director of the Barnard Medical Center and a plant-based physician. He is board certified in internal medicine. Um, should I take this mic and sit? Um, my first question will be for uh, Joseph. You have a mic? Great. All right. So, um, the... We yeah, I think increasingly people probably in this audience in particular understand that there is a connection between food and the environment and the future of the planet. But I think that <clears throat> there's a lot of um, confusion over which foods mm -hmm. and... and you know, organic versus GMOs versus plants, animals, all that sort of stuff. And I think that um, we tried to sort of simplify it a little bit here and save it until the end because our experience is that people have a lot of obstacles about behavioral change, whether it's driving a different car or eating different food. So we tried to address those sort of barriers to change first and then give them the information at the end about sort of the broader perspective. But I think that um, what we tried to sort of capture in the brief time that we had is just that, um, you know, a lot of people think of megafauna when they think of saving, you know, endangered species and they connect with elephants and rhinos and giraffes and don't realize that the number one cause of habitat loss globally and the number one um, loss, cause of the loss of biodiversity is actually the animal foods industry globally. Half of the world's land mass roughly goes to the production of animal foods. Uh, a quarter of the world's fresh water, as you saw, half in the United States, about half 
of the water in the lower 48 states. Um, so this is like amazingly significant. Number one cause of air pollution, number one cause of water pollution, mm -hmm. and it just goes on and on. So um, I think that, you know, it was difficult though, because if, if we spent too much time on it, it becomes sort of a gloom and doom film, and we just start hammering stuff, you know, a little right. bit too much, I think. So I think that our, our goal was to address it um, at a point maybe when people were willing to hear it. Because I think- We obviously learned a lot about you and your personal story. Um, that the story of your father in the film, it was very well done. And I actually personally want to ask you a question about something that was said at the end. And that, you pronounce that correctly? Correct. He said, it's not about being the strongest and the biggest, it's really about what are you going to do with your strength and what are you going to do with the power that you have? And Damien Manda said, True strength is acknowledging truth and taking action. I personally did not expect that message to be at the end of this movie, and I found that surprising and profound. And so my question to you is, was that a message that you came into the film knowing that you wanted to end with, that you wanted to have be such a powerful message? Yeah, that's a great question. It was really a personal revelation. I mean, when I started this journey, it was really, I mean, quite selfish in a way. It was about my own recovery and my own performance to compete just, you know, in a cage, mm -hmm. in a sport, which was my profession. <clears throat> and it just became obvious to me that there was growing stakes. You know, it wasn't just short-term performance and recovery. You know, it had growing stakes with uh, my father having a heart attack, realizing that it was affecting our health. And it's the most significant thing that we could do to affect our health. And then growing stakes again with the, the health of the planet itself and, and the, the species that live on it. So for me, it was this journey of uh, increasing stakes and I think you know what Damien and Patrick were alluding to is that we have the power in our hands, whether it's the health, whether it's uh, performance, whether it's uh, protecting the planet, protecting other species. I mean, we really are empowered um, rather than just being a victim. Um, the single biggest thing that you can do to uh, help your health or to help the planet is just to switch. Uh, and eat a lot more plant foods and, uh, you know, possibly all the way to a plant-based diet, so. You said it's best to lead by example, and that growing up, you had, asparagus is, is, fi is new to you, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I love that line. Yeah. Fabulous. So, my question to you is, what are you doing to lead by example, possibly in the community that you grew up with, communities that are similar, that are facing these same issues? What is the, what are you now doing? Well, you know, um, being being plant based, you know, most of the time people call you irritating or aggravating because you're trying to <laughs> you're trying to teach them about something that you know that you learn, uh -huh. and you know, um, and then based on you know the reaction that you had from being plant based, you know, you, you're trying to you're trying to sell it, you're trying to sell it just like they're selling you all the other yeah. things that that goes against it. So, uh, you know, me leading by example, uh, you know, on my Instagram, you know, uh, which is B.Y. Jennings, by the way. <laughs> um, you know, me leading by example through my Instagram and just keep, you know, giving posts. And, uh, you know, my son is also a vegan as well. I wouldn't have it no other way. How old is your son? He's nine years old. Fantastic. You know, so, uh, you know, yeah, so, you know, wherever I go, um, you know, I just pretty much just educate people on on what they don't know, you know, and far as, you know, me not being educated on, you know, certain foods is because, you know, I come from, you know, the worst part of, you know, Philadelphia. So not only is it, is, is it a myth, you know, on the outside, whether, you know, whether you're from the suburbs or wherever, in, 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 in the inner city, you know, where, where I come from, I'm trying to like dress my words up. You know, I'm, I'm a little more hood, you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm just, yourself, trying, I'm just trying to dress it up and, you know, be more, be more professional, be trying to explain. You know, it's better to explain things when you just say whatever you want and how you want. But, uh, but, but, but yeah, you know, uh, so, so we come from like, you know, subsidy, subsidized homes, you know, where, where, where certain foods are just, we just don't have access to right. it. And you know, if it's not on the list, you're not getting it. Right. You know, um, and we just don't think outside the box, you know, normally, you know, um, it has to take some type of experience, you know, uh, maybe someone goes off to college or goes off to somewhere else and just pretty much just bring that information back. So, um, 
So that's what I did. I was a person that went out, came back with information, and you know, I just tried to influence, you know, and lead my example to show them that look. And then this this documentary is one of is another. It's it's going to be it's so profound mm -hmm. now because when it comes out, they're like, oh, he did see that, you know. So we 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 just doing it, we're working it, you know, day by day, and you know, we just improving, and I just keep on spreading the word. That's all I can do. keep moving down the line, Dr. Loomis. Um, is here, many of whom may be trying to influence others, um, is the number one thing they can say or do to help other people in their lives, their loved ones, change the way they eat? Well, I, I think like Brian was just saying, uh, you know, when we lead by example, mm -hmm. um, when, when they see what the profound effects it has, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate because I was able, I'm able to share my story. I, was in practice for 30 years in St. Louis and led a, ate a standard American diet and developed a number of health problems from that and was able to reverse all of that after I saw forks over knives in my plant base. So being able to share that experience and, and lead by example in my personal life, people listen to that. And when they see a, an athlete like, like Dotsy or Brian perform at such a high level, you know, they say, well, if, you know, if he can do it, well, I can do it, right? And so I, I think that just, Leading by example is probably the most important thing you can do. And, and you know, the, the Daniel Patrick Moynihan, an American politician, once said, to paraphrase, we can all have our own opinions, but we can't have our own facts. Mm -hmm. And the facts are, is, 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 is yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it's a plant-based diet. So, you know, I Because uh, in the film, you said that when you became, um, a vegan, you performed at your best. You said that uh, you were the oldest person at 39 and a half, woman or man, to win an Olympic medal. And did you do it? Were you were you already cycling? Were you vegetarian? And then you went vegan. W what happened? Yeah, performance is a big, uh, big thing all across the board. Um, <clears throat> I get asked by a lot of ladies uh, after the Game Changers of. Uh, for Game Changers 2, are we going to study women's sexual virility? Because <laughs> <laughs> something that, that was my question for the, <laughs> my husband's plant-based too, so you know how our house is now. Um, what was the question? <laughs> land of casseroles and mac and cheese and mm -hmm. you know biscuits and gravy so um it took a long time and it's a great regret that i ate animals for 35 years but i did um <laughs> and i was exposed to um uh, animal cruelty and mm -hmm. said no that's, that's it i don't want to be a part of that i'm not going to pay into that system that's for sure uh and then uh, kept learning and then a bit later went completely vegan you know uncovered all of the dairy myths that were told and mm -hmm. yeah Fantastic. <laughs> and that's how we'll end it before we go to the audience. So Dotsie did bring up this question that I was curious about. This is a very uh, man-focused film, and man-centered. And I, it was actually quite eye-opening for me. Um, I, I learned a lot. And I'm sure a lot of folks in our audience did too. So, um, but I also understand that you may be wanting to try to add more women athletes in this film or possibly a next film. So I wanted to just ask you about that. Was that a specific choice yeah, I mean, actually, for this I think film? Joseph would probably answer this one. It was really, you know, he, he brought the idea to okay. me. It was very specific uh, research that was done. Do you want to speak to that, Joseph? And my second question was, this, this film covers a lot of ground. Um, and most times when we see vegan films, they are specifically focused you know, one or two topics. So, and hopefully this is not a question for you also. I'm hoping this is a question for you. But, um, but uh, well, yeah, I mean, obviously it should be obvious that a plant-based diet is the way forward. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Dr. Loomis says, you know, we have the three, we, we spend three and a half trillion dollars a year in, in sick care in, in, in the world. You know, we complain about, you know, I don't know what our military budget is, 300 billion, three, three and a half trillion dollars a year. And how much, how much, um, study did you have in nutrition when you went to school? Like zero. You know, yeah. a couple of hours this, this of biochemistry. Zero to three. This is common. Yeah. So, so we have 
doctors that are you know about my age advising people that are sick about not that they don't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. But th this to me was like the you know when you look doing a business or doing a film, you look at you know, for a disruption. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more ripe for disruption than a film like this because we're so dysfunctional it, and you know. The, the consequences for our health, the environment. I mean, I think it's, if, if this, if everybody saw this film, I think the world would be, you know, it, this will probably be hopefully one of the better environmental films ever made without us just talking about it just a little bit because mm -hmm. we've, I, I, hopefully we've done a, a decent job of, um, of putting the facts out there. But it's, I mean, we could, you know, there's a whole series or a couple series of, of you know, we didn't talk about longevity, one of the, you know, the. the you know, the pieces of hanging fruit that we didn't talk about was that uh, Ornish was doing this work with telomeres, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the, the woman who won the Nobel Prize for a discovery of telomeres that you know, could extend your life. Telomeres are like the, the ends of your chromosomes. They're um, likened to the ends of your shoelaces where they, you know, like the plastic caps, and they start to unravel as you get older. That's, that means your, your life is ending. And a, a plant-based diet can repair those telomeres. Mm -hmm. And that ties into the, the work that Dan Buettner has done with blue zones, where mm -hmm. you know people that traditionally live in these areas and they can live up to 100 or more. And we didn't talk about that at all, you know. And as you get older, because this is really designed for like a, you know young male or young young athletes, so we didn't talk about that at all. So there's to, to me, this you know we just sort of glimpsed at the you know we, we glanced at the at the topic. There's a, there's a lot more to be done. Uh, yeah, and then we can. Move on. Then we'll move on to yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I love hearing what people have to say too, mm -hmm. um, not just me. Um, I, yeah, so when James and I first started this, we, we sort of targeted, we were thinking of really just targeting men, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you grow up as a traditional male or just, I guess, a guy in general, you, you get this sort of mockery around not eating meat. Um, and there is this idea that real men eat meat. If it's not stated explicitly, it's sort of implied. Mm -hmm. um, like he was saying, you know, you go to a restaurant, you, you know, I'm just going to have whatever quinoa, and the other guy's like, that, that's not really cool. You, you need to eat different than that. Um, so at first we were sort of focused on protein and masculinity, and then we started realizing that there was a lot of crossover with the myths. Mm -hmm. um, that a lot that women believe a lot of the myths too. But the reason that we sort of, <clears throat> in the middle of the film, gets a little gendered because we took a whole year off uh, making the film to look at behavioral psychology and we looked at food and gender and identity and the people who study those things and uh, we were pretty overwhelmed by what we found which is that in 23 of the countries they studied all 23 um, meat was associated with masculinity and plant foods were associated with more feminine qualities and that you know eight out of ten people roughly in, in the Western world who eat plant-based are women and young men eat twice as much meat as, as uh, young women mm -hmm. um, so and some of those and it, for us we realize that it's about identity mm -hmm. so there's a big it's a big implication they've had studies where they'll give young men a soy based burger and tell them that it's beef and then they'll give them a beef burger and tell them that it's soy and they'll say that the soy one made them feel great because they thought it was beef and the beef one made them feel weak because it was soy mm -hmm. so we know how much it lives in their heads Mm -hmm. And that has a lot to do with the narratives and the myths around that. So um, while we, you know, we didn't try to solely target men, but I think that it was important because I think most people believe you can, like Scott, maybe run a long way mm -hmm. on a plant-based diet, or I don't know, be thin and creative and artistic. But the big, strong, muscly, tough guys—I don't think that really shocks people. Right. I mean, even at my gym when the film was being made, I'd show them Brian or James or Patrick or Kendrick, and they'd be like. These guys don't eat meat. I mean, literally, like almost fall over. So I think that that disruption that Louis was talking about was sort of central, mm -hmm. and that and that those myth, myths are they really do target men in large part. And I think that more people. You talk about all about the all of us. We're we're sympathetic, but we're a tiny minority in the in the world. Uh, uh, what are you going to do? How are you going to make this film so everybody sees it? I was commissioned to do their film, and they're, they're, they're actually in the process of uh, selling it right now or licensing it. So they're, they're, they're uh, conversations with multiple distributors at the moment. But I, I, I mean, you say that you're, you're an audience that sort of is already open to this message. But I think that the way that we've approached this with young athletes and the counter to this effect of um, what's called the backfire effect, where you just give information and um, 
guys will actually dig their heels in deeper and eat more meat, it's been shown. The counter is actually to show role, role models. And I think it doesn't really matter what your background is, sports is sort of, um, you know, an area that everybody, it doesn't matter, you know, your race, it doesn't matter your income. I think a, a sports film and people hearing about, you know, the advantage that you can get and especially sexual uh, function, which has been one of the favorite scenes in the film. I think that, um, you know, a lot of people want to hear that message and so, I think this sort of thing can just go viral, but having said that, we're in distribution talks with some of the major distributors, and obviously we'll do a big push. According to one major study, has stopped eating meat at some point, but only about 2% have stuck with it. So five out of six people who try to stop eating meat go back to eating meat. And we realized that sort of about a year into the film, is that we can create a film that'll make people feel motivated to maybe go out and eat less meat or none at all or whatever. But if we don't support them in different ways, that's we're pretty much gonna fail. So we're in the process of building out an app, and of course the website, and of course a book, and all these things that need to go along with it. You're gonna, it's bad for your hormones. And they might think, oh, but I thought it wasn't, and he's gonna say just chicken, broccoli, rice, whey protein, and really like, you, you believe the five people nearest you, they say, you know, over time. Um, so we need to get in the gym. And there, we need to have Game Changer certified trainers and dietitians. We need to have food in the frozen food section eventually. We need to be in the corner stores. I want to say I love the film. I love the way you got at the subject and the messages, and um, you just did a terrific job up there. And um, many of the young wares are sold in farmers markets all over, um, and they're absolutely delicious fish. Stuff yeah, very different. And so forth. So right. yeah, that's the question. Yeah, I think that the complication with that is it's, it's something that because I've studied this for three decades and and. My fiance Shannon has a master's in sustainable food systems and we've co-authored these giant reports on this stuff and it's a really complex question and it's a complex answer. You start with that foundation, like what nurtures human health ultimately. There's no research that shows that organic cheese, for example, is healthier than inorganic cheese. There's no solid data on that or beef or chicken. Like you saw that the, the meat that we used in the film was organic, grass-fed, um, free range and unfortunately, those foods still lead to the same diseases. So the first question might be foundationally, is these, are these the foods that we want to eat? Um, and not necessarily all or nothing, maybe there's room uh, on a health perspective. I think it'd be hard to argue that a little bit of anything wouldn't kill you. To be fair, a cigarette a week won't kill you either. Um, that doesn't mean that it's good for you. It doesn't mean that it's gonna kill you. Um, in terms of sustainability, there are a lot of farm systems now across North America that don't actually use manure and use different ways to fix nitrogen, and uh, they seem to be doing really well, but this is a, that's a very complex sort of thing. And then of course there's the animal issue, which we don't dig into a whole lot, but which m might revolve around whether that's the right thing to do. Um, well, who doesn't want to die? There's no such thing as humane slaughter. Mm -hmm. Killing. It's not real. Uh, I always, whenever I meet somebody who has a plant-based diet, I always ask, I'm always curious, did you come at this first from a health perspective, a moral perspective, or an environmental perspective? So I, I think there's really quite a range here. So Dotsy, as she said, uh, really did it first and foremost for the animals, and then you know perhaps even thought that her performance would suffer, but didn't care, and it turned out that her performance improved. Uh, Dr. Loomis came at it from a health perspective, and uh, you know noticed. What do you drop? How many pounds did you drop? Yeah, I lost about 60 pounds. 60 and my pounds. cholesterol dropped like 260 to 150. And I had sleep apnea, which went away. And, you know, so. And uh, Brian, Brian, I'm not quite sure. What was your original was that? And health reasons with Brian. And for me, it was really about performance and recovery. But of course, as you start to learn these things, as you realize that it's really a myth that we need these foods, that they're not natural and necessary per se, is that I think you've become opened up to these other aspects. And so now I. You know, I am more aware of the environmental issues and the uh, and the, uh, the animal issues as well. So, you know, I think we've all come to it really from slightly different angles, but yeah, I think you start to appreciate the other aspects as well. Thank you, James. Thank you. Penetrate those markets and then also with the firefighters who recognize the health benefits, what are some of the ways that folks are learning to, to get that number lower to make sure that once we teach someone or once they see this film, that it sticks? Right? I mean, and I think we forget that our eating habits are really learned behaviors, and then again, that's by evolutionary design, right? If, if you have to think about walking through the woods, you know, contract my quad, flex my hip and my knee, and walk right past the right areas, you wouldn't have seen the leopard, you wouldn't have lasted very long. 
So, so our brains evolved a mechanism when we habituate a task, our subconscious brain takes over, right? And unfortunately, many of us just learn that you know, meat is good and you know, McDonald's is cheap, McDonald's tastes good, McDonald's is convenient, I gotta get the kids to soccer practice, so I'm just gonna go to McDonald's. Without ever stepping back to think that what did I just feed myself and my kids wasn't even food. Arguably, it's not. So the, the construct I use with my patients is it's like pushing the snowball over the top of a mountain. If you can get over the top, you don't have to push anymore. You feel better, you lose weight, you're not taking pills. The hard part's getting it to the top. Three things have to happen. You have to have, find a reason to push. We talk about it the wrong way. Quit smoking, you're gonna get lung cancer. Get your blood pressure down, you're gonna have a stroke. Get your cholesterol down, you're gonna have a heart attack. People know that, and it doesn't change their behavior. Yeah. A different way to think about it would be, why would it be important for you not to have those things? Because when I give, if I give people five pieces of paper and say, give me the top five reasons you don't want cancer, heart attack, stroke, one piece of paper comes back, right? I learned for my kids, my grandkids, my retirement. So that's the first thing. Second thing is figuring out how to lower the slope of the road and the height of the mountain. And that's under, really critically understand. I don't know how to cook. I don't know how to shop. I don't know, you know, I don't know what quinoa is. I eat when I'm stressed out. So really systematically developing a toolkit in the community to help tackle those barriers. And third is, and probably the most important, is you gotta recruit as many people as you can to help you push. And I know you guys have a great plant-based support group there, and, and it's, it's a really uh, creating community around change. That's hopefully what this movie will do, uh, this film will do. So, uh, you know, I think you just gotta keep pushing. You know, you gotta keep going. And, and, you know, if you move to London, you gotta learn how to drive on the other side of the street. And, and it takes three or four months to do that. And one day you get in the car, and guess what? That's how you drive. And, and you wouldn't think about driving on the wrong side of the road in moderation, right? <laughs> you guys refer to your kids in the movie and all that kind of stuff and one of my main concerns um, I kind of stumbled onto veganism in the tail end of um, my basketball career I played professionalist was when I went looking for a daycare for him and every single place I went it was just like oh we have a certified nutritionist that comes up with our meal stuff and then you go and it's like sausage and pancakes on a stick cheese on like wonder bread and these are like 20 or thirty thousand dollar a year daycare I mean, it's like, what are you guys doing to do that? And like, what are the plans for the movie or like the next movie to address children? Because, and so he doesn't, that to, right. to him is common sense. Like, what are we gonna do to address the babies? Well, Thank you. Well, well, I think, I think, uh, that's great. You know, I, I just think that, you know, uh, strengthening the influence at home is one of the most important things, period, because Eating other things are not the only things that the child is going to be faced with when he leaves them doors. So, um, so I, I think that you know, you know, just implementing it, you know, in the child on the daily. I mean, if your child is only going to do what he sees you do, you know, um, if 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 you pray, your child's going to want to pray one day. I want to pray like mommy. I want to pray like daddy. I want to lift weights like dad, or I want to do this like mommy. The child is going to do what he sees at home, and we just have to strengthen our influence at home. They don't understand it, and these are the reasons why we do things like, you know, make documentaries, you know, uh, come up with different facts and things like that and push for it. So um, we definitely, you have to just keep making food, preparing food, um, and also just telling your child the importance every day. Of, of doing it because that, that peer pressure when you go to school, like, like right now, I send my son to school with lunch every single day. And I have no idea how he has a negative balance on the food. You know, it's like, I don't know whether they can just go buy food and put it on a little card or whatever. And I'm like, I send, you, I send you to school with lunch every day. So why are they sending me a bill? You know. <laughs> so it's kind of scary for me to even look further into it. <laughs> so you know, man, to say, listen, son, this is how we do things. This is the reason why we do things. And you know, to, in, in 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 order for him to really understand it from a better perspective, is to lead by example and just pretty much to say, okay, this is what it is. This is what huh? you'll do. Flex on them a little bit, show them that, yo, <laughs> yo, if you if if you if you eat plants, you'll look like daddy and things like that. You just gotta try. And that's not the only thing that we have to, you know, implement into our children because peer pressure is it's
it's crazy. It's a whole lot of different families. You know, you have families that's up, down, negative, positive. So. I just wanted to, you know, not everybody knows that to, to make this film, it took a huge team. And obviously, I'm really uh, thankful for everyone that came out today, especially uh, Dr. Loomis and um, the athletes. And also, I want to thank uh, one of our staff that didn't was doing a stand up, Shannon. Shannon Corney is the co producer. Stand up. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 